now that she's in the seventh grade, these kids seem to actually be listening when the guy tries to coach them. Uh, so Desaad has taken over Apocalypse. No. And then, then Darkseid returns. No. And he's mad. And then Lobo goes and gets, uh, uh, what's his name? Timberwolf. And they're going to go and conspire to kill Darkseid. And Darkseid's son, Orion, is secretly, no. No. No, this is, no. (laughs) No. Thanos. Listen, listen, DC fans, if you're trying to uh, get some uh, grips around what Thanos number one is about, just think of it as, here's Desaad, Darkseid's back, Lobo is there. Uh, no. Timberwolf, they're all there. That's, the gang no. is all there. Okay, first of all, that's not a gang. Timberwolf and Lobo have literally never appeared in a panel together. Well, this is the first time. Congratulations, Marvel, for doing something that DC could never do. Okay. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. I, I, I just think that for me, for someone that does mm-hmm. not know a whole backstory on... Uh, who's Star Fox and uh, the champion. Mm-hmm. And Ficos. yeah, I, you know, I don't know who all those people are, but the way that they're drawn in here. And of course, Dark Side and Thanos being almost identical to one another. All right. So Except one wears a dress and the other doesn't. You know, the elders of the universe, <laughs> the, the collector from Guardian yeah, of the yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. The collector, the pursuer, actually not the pursuer, there's a whole bunch of aliens who predate our galaxy. Really? There's the, gran- the, the Grandmaster and the Collector and the Framistat and the Hamistat. DJ One of them is the Jeff. champion. Uh-huh. The champion has devoted his immortality to being the greatest at hand to hand combat. Does. At what he does. Yeah, he came to, the, or to Earth uh, probably 25 years ago, comic or real time, and basically had a fight with everybody who had super strength. And the person that beat him was the thing. Well, then he can't be the, call himself the champion now, can he? Sure he can. He's a cheating bastard. Mm. In any case. I don't know. The way, but honestly, the way these characters are drawn in here, at first when I read it, I was like, is this the sod? What's going on? And then, That's uh, Deodato. And then, letter, then really, uh, once uh, Star Fox is in his uniform, he looks a lot like Timberwolf. And of course, champion <laughs> looks like Lobo. Change the color scheme a little bit, and that's what you got. But, um, so with that being said, not a horrible issue. No, um, maybe a little more bombastic than that's I what I kind of, but that's what I think when you've got Thanos, you've got to have boom, this happens and bang, this happens and smash and death and death. Yeah. Oh, I forgot death shows up in here, which has got to make yeah. Neil Gaiman happy. You don't gotta. Is that actually I, death? Death? I don't know. It said something about, and then death enters the scene. Death is found thing. Well, yeah. yeah. Death has long been in the Marvel universe, mm-hmm. an attractive young woman and or a skeleton in a suit. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, uh, I, I, for me, that's what I think I enjoyed this issue, how it was like um, Mako or Mako uh, telling the story of how Thanos came back to town. How Beth Sock. And I, From a distance, the Black Quadrant seems like any other yeah. small move. But listen, that's oh prince, no move. Listen, oh prince, as I tell you the tale of the Black Quadrant. Yeah. Got to get I back, now I gotta watch. back to the Thanos now. Thanos, Jack. I, I think now I have to watch uh, Conan the Barbarian. What, what do you think is better? Conan the Barbarian, Conan mm-hmm. the Destroyer, or did you watch the um, uh, remake of uh, Conan recently? I haven't the one watched Conan I saw the one with Conan and I saw the one with uh, Brigitte Nielsen. Yeah, that's Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. And okay. then they had the one with uh, Aquaman in it. Jason which, Momoa. Yeah, I, which I didn't think was a horrible movie, but I don't know. Just like I don't think that this is a horrible comic book. No, this is actually a, a, a very solid comic book as long as you're in the mood for what it's peddling. And what it's peddling is big widescreen outer space punchy punchy fighty fighty and you know I, that's fine i i feel a little thanosed out but frankly i get tired of being the the wet blanket stick in the mud guy who's like this comic isn't what i prefer so well what do you prefer can, in your thanos comics i really 
Thanos you know, my pondering fa- the life of uh, going to Arby's or something. No, my favorite. You're thinking of our uh, dark side stories from yeah. back in the day. No. Well, and this well, is the thing. Said my introduction to Thanos came from when he the, was driving uh, around in a helicopter with his name on the side of you it. You know, if I finish a <laughs> sentence. No. <laughs> when I think Thanos, I always think uh, Jim Starlin Warlock stories mm-hmm. and that big thinking sort of existential 70s. What have I become? So this is not that, but this is not bad. And for an artist that I often have problems with, Mike Deodato really nails this issue. And he's doing some interesting work with like textures. And mm-hmm. I don't think it's actually Zipatone because it looks like it, it though. So. But it's definitely he's playing with textures and filters and he's playing with his art style Mm -hmm. in ways that, yeah, you can look at at, uh, Trico Slatteris and think, boy, this guy looks a little like Lobo. But you can also sit and just look at the the depth and the background and the weird textural things. And even Thanos himself is what I like to call movie-fied. You know how when you go in the movies, the guys will wear suits that look like their suits in the comics? But they'll have all sorts of lines and, and shapes and little hidden seams and things like Barry Allen's suit yeah, on yeah. TV. Yeah. It's that, but it's done really interesting and really well. And even Thanos's chin wedges, mm-hmm. he's given them this really fascinating kind of intricate pattern that looks like, a, I don't know, like a shell maybe. Yeah, no, I got a kick out of it. I really paid more attention to the art than I did mm-hmm. anything else in here. Uh, because I just thought it was so good. The coloring is fantastic, and the, like you yep. said, the texture is is just wonderful. This feels like this doesn't feel like a Marvel comic, or actually, I take that back. It feels like a Marvel comic done in a style that you would see in the late '80s, early '90s, as comics is suddenly deciding, "Hey, we don't have to do four color stuff. We can really right. make comics something different." Kind of like. Um, Arkham, uh, the wasn't Grant Morrison uh, book. Yeah, um, the Arkham Asylum issue. That that yeah. is a very good comparison visually. Yeah, and, it's and that's not what the I, same art style, but it's that no, same but it's in that same. Spirit. We can do something different and weird, yeah. and it's that spirit okay. of experimentation and weird expression. Because yeah, yeah. this is this, but most of the heavy lifting is done by Deodato. There isn't a whole lot of dialogue, and what dialogue there is tends to be a you fool. You took what is not yours, and now I shatter your very soul with my big purple hands. And by the way, you can kill yourself, or I can kill you, but you won't like it if I kill you. Yeah, you can kill yourself easy, or you can kill yourself hard. (laughs) Head or gut. Head or gut. Yeah, exactly. This is not a book that I would have probably picked up had we not done it for uh, the dueling reviews, as we like the kids call it, the DR. Is that what they call it? Yeah, the kids are like, hey, man, did you check out the DR? We're totally on the DR, yo. But I'm glad that we did because this is interesting. And it's it doesn't feel like yet another Thanos story or another attempt to try and, I don't know, capture some of that Guardians of the Galaxy money in the comics because. No, no, because if they wanted to do that, they would they've already done that with the. Oh, yeah, Groot and Rocket Raccoon and the Groot had his own book, Rocket Drax had his own book, and some of them are great, and that's the thing, and some of them are just like, doopy doopy doop here's our money from the movie but this is one of those issues that and they actually mention this in the letters page, they refer to um, the Darth Vader series Mm -hmm. that Marvel just wrapped up, yeah it's kind of in that same vein because you're dealing with a terrible, evil, hateful villain and he's going to do hateful, evil, villainous things. And there are going to be people trying to take him out because he's a hateful, evil villain. But right. the spotlight is squarely where it belongs and it's on Thanos. Mm-hmm. And Thanos is carrying. And of course, that last page reveal shocking. Oh, well, Thanos is dying. Everyone spoilers. Oh, way to spoiler it. Yeah, well, that's what people get. When they, they don't read the comic ahead of time. That's true. But, you know, I mean, this has been is, out for 12 hours now, 12 whole hours. Gosh. Yeah. Well, then people deserve what they get. Exactly. And if you uh, enjoy deserving what you get, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers, where not only will you ensure that shows like this continue, but you'll get a bunch of other bonus content. Some of it a little <laughs> bit spoilery. Spoilers. Uh, we appreciate all your support at patreon.com slash major spoilers. Major spoilers. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, knowing that Thanos is dying is uh, interesting. Oh, yeah, I could have swore that he died before, right? Hasn't he died before and come back, or is this just Thanos, part of his... Yeah, Thanos dies relatively irregularly. It's when was kind the of last issue. time... You said you get tired of Thanos again. When was the last mm-hmm. time Thanos was in a series? I know that they said that uh, as as uh, Mako was telling the story about Thanos was involved in wars, both it's secret awesome. and civil. He was just in um, secret wars and before that he was in um that big avengers thing the and granted that was a great story the uh jonathan Framson husband thing what was it called infinity or eternity or oh okay i didn't read that yeah yeah the hickman stuff was interesting but it had a lot of thanos and it had you know corvus glaive who is totally not disod right <laughs> and it, it had a lot of these characters uh floating in and around it and Granted, that was four or five years ago, but in comic terms, four or five years ago means it's more like than four or five a, uh, story arcs, probably. Yeah, it's like 10 minutes ago. Well, I mean, when we do talk about comics in terms of years and, you know, when we are starting to see stories that have a huge, um, a, a huge spin to them, you know, where, you know, it used to be you might have three issues of this story and then three issues of this other arc and together they would be your collected trade of two stories. Well, now you're, we're into this world where Spider-Man, um, whatever the death of Peter Parker run of Octavius, uh, as Peter Parker, the, the superior, mm-hmm. superior Spider-Man, Spider-Man that ran for like a year, right? That's one arc. That's one story. So but it was like 31 issues. I know. Right. <laughs> or maybe it was longer than that. Who knows? But I mean, we're still feeling the repercussions of that. Now we've got the, uh, the clone conspiracy that's going on and that'll run, six to 12 issues. So yeah, when you're talking about four or five years ago was the last time we saw Thanos, that was maybe only four or five, maybe at most 10 story arcs ago. And that is, doesn't seem like that, that long. You're right. So maybe it is maybe too much Thanos too soon. Well, you know, you have, everybody has their level. And I mean, Thanos is a high profile guy. Part, I think of my Thanos reservations, is the fact that DC has gone so hard for dark side over the past 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is about dark side. If it's not about dark side, everybody needs to talk about what they think dark side is doing. And dark side has a, an electric guitar and a skateboard and he's totally proactive. Wiggly, 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 dude. <laughs> I must go. My planet apocalypse needs me. Boom, 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 tube. Thanos died on his way back to earth. Thanos never dies. He merges with the Great Wall, but uh, I don't think he dies. Well, you know. Yeah, Darkseid needs to be used. And, and here's the problem. And, 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 and I, this may be the problem with Thanos, too, right? Where, and we kind of discussed this with Superman that uh, when we were doing the uh, President Lex. In yeah. order for, if Superman is having these super powerful uh, powers, if, if they're amping up, then he also needs someone who is not just this captain of industry who's doing crooked things behind everyone's back. He needs a president of the United States who's doing these horrible, horrible things to compete with him. And maybe that's what's going on in both the Marvel and DC universes where these characters have become so powerful. And I don't know if they're, you know, I mean, we've seen Superman, his uh, powers have not been super amped up, but we've seen these stories become so complex and so big and so grandiose that they've moved beyond your Batman fighting crime in a dark alley to Mm -hmm. Batman needs to fight Steppenwolf and granny goodness at the same time while dodging Omega beams in order for a story to be interesting. Maybe we have, first uh, of all, you cannot dodge an Omega beam. It will find you and follow you. Yes. And send you back in time or whatever. But I mean, that's, I mean, that is the, I, I think that's the thing though, is maybe the same way with Marvel is they've gone so big that Maybe you can't tell yeah. the small stories without without putting new characters in the in the suit of armor. You can, but it, it's it's. I mean, there are a lot of thought presses of, of creativity, but one of the things that keeps coming up is it's hard to continue raising your voice when you've been shouting all along. And a story with Dark Side is a very stern voice, if not a shout. Sometimes you have to slow down and you have to take a breath. You have to have, you know, maybe a Doom Patrol story here and yeah, there. But yeah. you can't have everything be the greatest threat we've ever seen ever 
because then it, it I mean, it goes over the top. Even right. original Star Trek, where everything was literally the greatest threat ever, had episodes where we'd just, you know, I'm hang around the, the ship and. Yeah. Yeah. Spock would be like, I'm mad, grr. I want to kiss girls, grr. <laughs> and that's a whole episode. But though, I wonder if audiences' taste and attention span have evolved to where that's how you have to do it, where every title has to be a link bait title, where every action has to be grand and over the top and every personality in every show and every story has to be, this is the greatest, biggest thing ever to happen ever because we know that audiences will go somewhere else and play their video games or watch a Netflix or something that is right. taking away from these, this, this industry and this medium that has been around for, you know, almost a hundred years now, 80 years. I don't think it has to be. However, I, I agree with you that there are creators and, and editorial voices that say it has to no, be. No, no, I'm not saying that. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I, that's right. what I'm wondering is if, is if because this is the perception or because this is what's going on, then the right. owners and the managers and the editors are all like, well, we have to compete. So let's make it bigger, bolder, right. yeah, uh, louder. Well, and it's just like, you know, people love Legends of the Dark Knight. So let's get darker and darker and darker and, and less and less, uh, I don't know, coherent as we go. And there is a downside to it. And it's the same thing. I mean, you can't continuously get louder and louder and louder and louder, but you also can't continuously get darker and grimmer and bloodier. You have to take a moment and sit right there and let me tell you about the time I was the Prince of Bel Air. But you have to breathe. You have to have a structure that allows the story to ebb and flow a little bit. And I think that assuming that everything has to be all clash, all mighty, all everything is is the greatest threat ever leads us to madness. Like um, what's that thing where Superman murders everybody? Infinity or are you talking about Mark DC? Wade's insufferable or um no, I'm talking about literally Superman in the DC universe. And they're in like, they're on like year five of it now. It's based on a video game. Oh, um, you're in, talking about in the injustice. Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that book, when I've read it, is always constantly getting more and more dangerous and hateful. And oh my God, well, Superman killed the guy. And I wonder also too, if, and you said, you know, that's, that's why it's nice to have a Doom Patrol story. If yeah. these things are also, um, you know, a problem of the big title heroes and the heroes yes. that have suddenly been thrust into the spotlight. Whereas yeah. you can tell a fun, simple, interesting story with ugh, Robin, uh, Aquaman. or, you know, Aquaman. Yeah. Without it being an end of the world crisis event. But then again, no one's reading those, but that's then why you we also see get Batman. That. That's why we see Batman hitting. What is it? Six out of the top 10 <laughs> books in, for DC last, last but month. That's where we get that awful thought process that we have to have a league within a league. And we have to treat Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman as a trinity of godlike beings amongst even amongst the other superheroes. You have this demarcation, this delineation of, well, these are the characters that constantly have to be running at full speed until they vomit. And even then you want you want a quiet Wonder Woman story. You want a Batman story that. You know, it's just him and Duke hanging out and, and doing guy stuff. You want a story where even Superman isn't constantly racing around at the top of his lungs. Because when people say Superman is boring, they don't mean Superman is boring. They mean they can't think of any reason why Superman would be challenged. Right. No, they can't think of any and reason that's, and that's, why you can challenge Batman. And, and that that's is why those, you throw in Darkseid and that is why you throw in Thanos to take on the, the Avengers because who else is going to do it? But then you also have that moment where it's just the puzzler, you know? Yeah, bring Superman, back the wizard, everybody. Who's th what? <laughs> First of all, the wizard was a hero, <laughs> but Superman fought the prankster. Right. Batman fought, uh, what's that guy's name? The calculator, not the calculator as the calculating evil man. No, the guy who actually had a calculator on his chest mm -hmm. that would form big purple fists and punch you in the face. I mean, you can't be the, you can't be at the top of the lungs all the time or else you turn into Pendulette. And while Pendulette is awesome, 
I firmly believe that Penn Jillette just goes home and smokes a doobie and just goes, I want to be quiet for about a month. No, he's, he's a, he's a quiet person. Um, yeah. if you've ever m- met him or, um, listened to his podcasts and stuff where he's just like yeah. getting, getting honest with people or seeing him in being person, philosophical and being, yeah, he, no, he, uh, I saw him a couple of years ago when he was promoting his movie that he was in. I forget what that was. Um, uh, something about villains probably. Uh, but he was pretty, he was really, uh, he was really chill and really cool and just hanging out and, and just having fun times. And he didn't have to be, you know, on all the time. And right. I don't know, I like this Thanos story, but I can see where you're coming from about, you know, maybe too much, too much Thanos, maybe one right. really good Thanos story every 10 years. Or even, you know, give me five years before the next big giant arc of Thanos or Give me a few issues where Thanos is like quietly building his forces on the planet yeah. Bug Tussle. A different uh, franchise, dude. Um, the um, yeah, you're right though. Maybe it needs to be five years because ten years is a is a whole generation of comic book readers. <laughs> and if you do ten years, you're going to have to spend a whole arc explaining who Thanos is. Yep. So who is this Bats Man? Yeah, yeah. So thumbs up, thumbs down on this. Do you recommend it? I unexpectedly do recommend it. I feel like this is a book that's definitely more than the sum of the moving parts. Mm-hmm. And I did not expect to say that. So I'm, I'm oh, very you happy. In, I feel like you, well you really went in thinking you were going to hate this thing. No, I went in not knowing whether I was going to like it. Ah, okay. And thinking, well, it may be another one of those shows where Steven goes, what'd you think? And I go, eh. I can see that. I, I enjoyed so, it. I, I, I say that if you yeah. are... If you are not a uh, devouring everything Marvel and you're wanting something different than Spider-Man's uh, and Captain America's and Spider-Man. the other Spider-Man and the other Spider-Man and the girl Spider-Man, then and uh, the other girl Spider-Man and the other, and the other, Spider-Man other, other, and the girl other, Spider-Man. other, other Deadpool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Then definitely Thanos number one, I think is worth checking out for nothing yeah. else than the art. Uh, and, and seeing how it's, yeah. how it's done is really good. The, the art is remarkable and the story feels like it has something up its sleeve. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's a cooking up a something and I'm he like, eh, I'm on board with that. And he's dying. All right. Uh, coming out next week from dark horse comics, we have Buffy, the vampire, uh, sl- uh, Buffy, the vampire slayer season 11, number one. <laughs> so we're getting Buffy a whole the new vampire season. season. And I think this is a shorter season. If I remember correctly, it's only gonna be 12 issues instead of the normal 57. 22 or whatever that they've done. Um, I think season nine was like 57 issues or something. It might have been. Kingsway West number three comes out next week, as does Zone Continuum a Legacy Trade Paperback. Oh, there you go. DC Comics has Action Comics 968. Uh, Batgirl number five. Batman the Animated Series. Is that really what it says? I don't know what the heck this is. NBA Harvey Bullock action figure. Yep, NBA. What are they? They it's, put it's, them all in the NBA <laughs> outfits? No, it's like the it's like the monsters. Oh boy! I think what is the name of that uh, new Batman thing that's coming around? New Batman Adventures, maybe. No, I think we already had New Batman Adventures. What is? I no, gotta I'm see think, this. I'm thinking it's a Harvey Bullock figure in the style of the new Batman. Oh Adventures. no 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 no! When they say NBA, they're not talking about uh, National Basketball Association. They're talking about those giant six inch figures. Oh. oh, that are done in the Batman animated series line. Okay, now I know what this is. Now I know the, what to oh, put the, down. Oh, the new big ass figures. Yeah, that's yeah. What they... I've been collecting some of these, and I need to with this new line that's coming out. I got to get them. We're so we're getting Harvey Bullock, the Joker, Scarface, and Talia Al Ghul all come out next week. These are expensive figures. They are th- about thirty bucks a piece. But the thing is, they come with uh, multiple items. Like Harvey Bullock, for example, comes with. A regular donut, a half-eaten donut, some handcuffs, a <laughs> shotgun, some donuts. Uh, a shotgun, m- multiple points of articulation, and multiple hands so that you can Boy. swap them out to do a bunch of different things. The Except one that, for that shotgun. That's my dream weekend. The one that I am looking forward to coming out is there is a deluxe Batman animated series six-inch figure where the heads swap out. And so you get like six different expressions of Batman from the animated series. It looks pretty cool. But now that I know what NBA stands for, uh, Nibba, Nibba. All right. Batman Beyond Nibba. number two also comes out next week. DC Comics, Bombshells, Supergirl Bust, Wonder Woman Bust, Joker, Fish Plush. Uh, and then we also have a DC Comics Super Pets uh, uh, figures coming out next week. So you'll want to check those out. Flash number 11, Future Quest number seven, Harley Quinn number eight, 
Six Pack and Dog Welder, Hard Traveling Heroes 4. <laughs> That's a six issue series. So if you uh, are is. not on board, you better get on board now. See, Six Pack drinks beer and Dog Welder will Wink weld a dog to your, to your face. face. Is it always your face? It's usually your face, yes. Hmm. Dog welder likes to punish people. Is it a specific part of the dog or just randomly welded to it's your an face? An actual dog. No, no, no. But I mean, is it always the like dog. the bulldog's face to your face, the bulldog's butt to your face? I mean. There's a whole dog on your cheek. All right. Bow, 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 dog welder. Teen t- or, I'm sorry. Not, yeah, you Teen Titans number two and cool. Titans number five both uh, arrive next week, as does Wonder Woman number 11. Over at IDW Publishing, we have Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one. That's getting a second printing. I talked about that like two weeks ago on the Major Spoilers podcast. Uh, Gem and the Holograms number 21. Judge Dread number 12. My Little Pony Friends Forever number 34. We're going to be friends forever. We're going to be friends forever. Rom number five. Strawberry Shortcake number seven. Super Effers Forever number four. <laughs> Uh, and Transformers Tell All R1 number five and Winona Earp Legends of Doc Holiday number one. <laughs> Winona. Winona Earp. Winona. Image Comics has Black Monday Murders uh, one through four. The first uh, the first ones are all getting multiple printings. Now, number one, it's the fourth printing, third, second, etc. Chew mm-hmm. number 60, which I believe is the last issue. If it's not the last, it's close to the last. It's a six dollar book, so it's going to be it super sized. And this yes. is coming from Image, which normally keeps books around a three ninety nine, two ninety nine, depending on the title. Yeah, two fifty, two ninety nine, three fifty. It's not. It's a shame that Zach's not on the show anymore. I don't because know. Well, he, maybe we'll get him back for this one. He wouldn't have any comics to read. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Snot Girl number four and Wayward number eighteen arrive next week. Marvel Comics says Amazing Spider Man Annual number one, Cage number two, Civil War two number seven of eight. It'd be like we'll get to Civil War number. Uh, 12 of 8. I think it's 9 of 8 now, isn't oh, it? Oh boy, I don't know. Clone Conspiracy number 1 of 5, that's the third printing for that. Death of X number 4 of 4, yeah. that's the final issue of that. Uh, Empress number 7, Enchanted Tiki Room number 2. Marvel Sum Sum's number 4 of 4, so this is the Sum-sum. final issue of that. Sum Sum! Uh, Prowler number 2. Mosaic hey. number 1 gets a second printing. Ultimates number two, or sorry, Ultimates two number one now, and Venom one McFarlane variant now, and the regular <laughs> Venom, Venom number one, one universe now. Universe zero. <laughs> yeah. In all the rest category, we have Athena Voltaire and the Volcano Goddess number one. A lot of people looking forward to that one. Barack the uh, the Barbarian graphic novel, Belladonna number one, Captain Canuck twenty fifteen ongoing number ten, the complete. Peanuts hardcover box set, 1999 to, to uh, 2000. That's a $50 collection. Doctor wow. Who, the 10th uh, Doctor, year two, number 16. Doctor Who, the 9th Doctor, number seven. And Evil Ernie, God Eater, number four. That's God a penultimate eater. issue there. Uh, Jungle Fantasy, Ivory, number two. There are two different col- co- uh, covers on that one. And though nice. they're both thirty nine ninety nine. So there you go. I don't uh, think that's a typo. 39. 99. 99. Mm-hmm. 39, uh, 99, 99, 95. Lookers, lookers number zero. Mm-hmm. There are one, two, three, four covers on that one. There's the cover, wow. Mature. The nude mm-hmm. cover. The sexy <laughs> sleuths cover. The sexy sleuths nude cover. You're right. Ha! Then we have Masked number one, Ninjak number 21. Nude cover. <laughs> the uh, nude The Ravening. Cover. Oh boy, I don't know what the Ravening is. Uh, well, you know how there was a Raven? I don't think it's quite like that. This is even more Ravening. These are, I wonder what company is putting this out because if you could just get Ravening number one of four, it has a Blood Play cover for $9.99, a Blood Play nine cover for $9.99, then ra- right. the Ravening number three. I don't think it's Ravening. The Ravening, it's got the Alluring Century set, 60 bucks for that one. That's from Boundless, I think. Then you've got the Costume Change set, all uh, 40 bucks for that one. Then the uh, mm-hmm. issue number four is the Alluring Century set, 60 bucks. Costume Change set, 20 bucks. Nude and Naughty set, 25 bucks. 
It's like they're really upping the uh, price of some of these things. Well, and I think that these are like super, super indie. These are things that the creators, I believe the Revening had a Kickstarter. And they are putting out this issue and they're like, okay, this is the issue and everybody loved it. And we're now going to try and make some money. Let's see who this is by. I think it's written by Jay Nitz. Well, I'm waiting. There it is. It is adults. O- oh, uh, this series is rated adults only. Disclaimer. Graphic sexuality. Graphics. It is written by Jay Nitz with art by Christian Zanier. Uh-huh. The Queens of the Night return in a monster sized 64 page debut issue of Vampire Love and Loss. Vampire. Yeah. So there you go. If you want some sexy vampires. I wonder if one of the vampires is named Raven. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. And then the other one is named. Well, I think it's the Ravening or the Ravening. The Ravening have been spoken of in hush whispers for 20 years and are now reborn in an all new tale of darkness from seasoned writer Jay Nitz and illustrator Jack Jansen. In Helena number one, she uh, flexed her power as the adjudicator of hell and swept through the underworld, ending many dynasties. The vampire lords of House Morkego and House Volmon... (laughs) <laughs> we're lost to Helena's <laughs> wrath and their daughters, Izzy and Corey are struggling with how to keep them from collapsing in the chaos. Merging with another house seems the only option. So the two lovers defy all the rules and marry each other to unite their clans. But can their young blood survive the many threats now closing in around them as a horde of satyrs uh, target their weakness? It's a seductively sexy look at a new kind of underworld now living in the shadows. To top it off, we include two of the very first Ravening stories from 1997 in color for the very first time, as well as a cover gallery of some of the classic covers of the past. Classic covers of the past. So there you go. That's what it's about. Now we know. And knowing, as they say, is Is roughly 50% of any given conflict. Uh, Walter, uh, Walt Kelly's Pogo, uh, complete Dell Comics hardcover volume four. That's 60 bucks. That's definitely worth checking out. Wow. Yeah, it is. And then uh, World of Archie Comics Double Digest number 64. That's five double? Double, double. 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 Yep. And that double, is a double, look double. at uh, some of the books coming out next week. That is Thanksgiving week. And because of this, uh, we normally record on Thursday, but next Thursday is uh, Thanksgiving. So we will not have a no. uh, dueling review next week. Oh, I'm so sorry. We, um, we'll have to figure out how we're going to do... Um, uh, our other show, the uh, flashback podcast as well. So we're doing yeah. on Turkey. Yes. I like dark meat. Uh, and, uh, with, a with the stuffings and the cranberries, real cranberry sauce, not the stuff out of the can gross. All oh, the stuff out of the can is okay. And, well, my grandfather, that's the only kind of cranberries that he would eat would be the right. stuff out of the can. And it still had to have the ridges of the can and met him. Yes. Into the, uh, yes. Into the in my family, that's the only kind of fruit we had. <laughs> it was, was that and thing. those, uh, those mandarin oranges that come in a can, yeah. the tiny can. Yeah. Yeah. The sad thing was we, you'd get that whole little, um, 12 ounce can or whatever it is. And he'd cut off like one slice of it, put it on his, uh, on his roll on his dinner roll. And that was it. Uh-huh. Nobody else would eat it. The rest of it would go to waste, but he had his slice. Yeah. And then yeah. get 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 kind of grumpy if there was no cranberry sauce. So we're going to be you celebrating Thanksgiving next week, depending on where you live in the country. Hopefully you have something to give thanks for. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be celebrating Thanksgiving. Uh, we will miss you, that is for sure. But we will be back the week after to talk more comics, and we'll talk about what those are uh, the next time. Again, if you enjoy our show and you want to see it continue and you want to support us even during the holidays, head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers. Every little bit helps for less than the cost of a two pound turkey. You can support major spoilers for one month. And for less than the cost, let me think, for less than the cost of a 20 pound turkey, you can support major spoilers for an entire <laughs> year. Think about that. And for less of than the cost of a 20 turkeys. Less Wait, than what? the cost of 22 turkeys thrown from a plane swearing that they could fly you can probably support us for a couple of years at the highest level and get really cool stuff in return. And that's the other cool thing. It's not only do you get to see these shows continue, you also get a bunch of extra bonus content depending on your funding level. Listen, we're not funded by major corporations. We're not funded by movie studios. We are not funded by comic book companies. We are an independent uh, group of people who are going out and creating fun shows and content for you. And if you want to see independent content continue, then head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers and sign up today. 
Have a great holiday next week, everyone. Doesn't even matter if you're not from the United States. Have a great holiday anyway. And we will talk with you next time when you'll hear Matthew say, Star Fox, I hardly know Fox. This podcast is copyright 2016 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.